Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Karthik Kapoor and today we will be discussing about the topic from surgery to be more specific from pediatric surgery and that is gastroschisis versus omphalocele. So let's begin. So the two common abdominal wall defects are omphalocele and gastroschisis. The newborn presents with the abdominal contents that is your intestinal loops and maybe stomach and liver along with it outside the abdominal cavity. So these intra-abdominal contents lie outside the abdominal cavity which can lead to various complications in the future. So it is important to differentiate between omphalocele and gastroschisis. Here is a table differentiating between the two. Uh, so one has got a sac around it while the other one doesn't one has got an inflamed etymatous inflamed bowel loops and uh, one is associated with congenital abnormalities while the other one is not it is so confusing isn't it so let's get back to the basics of embryology and understand what the basic actual pathology is okay so here is a diagrammatic representation of a gravid uterus with a growing fetus inside so you can clearly see that the fetus is connected to the placenta through an umbilical cord. Okay. Uh, for today, we'll be concerned with only the gastrointestinal system, right? Somewhere over here, somewhere over here, you will be having a developing gastrointestinal tract, which will be divided into three parts. That is the foregut, midgut, and the hindgut. Now, what happens normally is... I repeat, this happens normally. The midgut takes a loop. It normally takes a loop and herniates out through the umbilicus into the umbilical cord. Okay, this happens normally. So it is also known as the physiological hernia. Okay, the midgut takes a loop and it herniates out of the umbilicus at around six weeks. Okay, so this is physiological, right? And then it returns back into the abdominal cavity at around 10 weeks of gestation. So this happens normally. So let us see again. Uh, this is another slide. This is a midgut loop. The normal physiological herniation of the midgut loop, which occurs at around 6 weeks. Okay. Okay. This is a better diagram. You can clearly see that the midgut loop is herniating out through the umbilical cord at 6 weeks. Okay. Now... Okay, this one at the 10th week of development, it goes back inside. So the normal physiological hernia that was present at 6 week, it comes back inside again. So now what will happen if it fails to get back inside? Yes, there will be a persistence of physiological hernia and this condition is known as omphalocy. If the intestine loop fails to get back inside the abdominal cavity again. So persistence of the physiological hernia is known as omphalocy. Uh, here are some points regarding omphalocele. Uh, if you break the word, the word omphalos, it means umbilicus and uh, seal means something that is herniating out or swelling. Okay. So, and uh, omphalocele is also associated with uh, certain congenital abnormalities such as Patau syndrome, Edwards syndrome, and also beckwith weidman syndrome and also Down syndrome. Uh, now you can just imagine that uh, for a very long period of time. See, these congenital abdominal deflect, uh, defects can be detected antenatally through a simple ultrasound. Okay. So, for a long period of time, your body has adapted, like the fetus, the fetus has adapted itself with the abdominal contents outside the abdominal cavity. Okay. The loops are outside the abdominal cavity for a very long period of time. So, your body has actually adapted and like in simpler terms, your uh, abdomen does not know how it feels to have an intestinal loop inside the abdominal cavity. So, after the delivery, when the baby comes out uh, in the neonatal period, so when you try to push the intestinal contents again into the abdominal cavity, don't you think that there will be an increase in the abdominal pressure? So, this condition is known as abdominal compartment syndrome. The increased abdominal pressure will 
lead to various features such as there will be an increased central venous pressure there will be an increase in the heart rate there will be decreased cardiac output there will be a decreased glomerular filtration rate etc so what we do is the minor defects can be uh, easily surgically corrected like we can easily twist the sac and then uh, reduce the contents again into the abdominal cavity whereas for larger defects you have to make some para umbilical incision these are known as your relaxing incisions so that the space inside the abdominal cavity increases and you can all one thing you can also do is that you can remove the subcutaneous tissue under the skin so that the space inside the abdominal cavity is increased to accommodate the herniated loops of intestines okay these are your M points related to omphalocele. Okay, so here is another diagram of omphalocele. You can see the intestinal loops are herniated into the umbilical cord. You can pause this video for a minute and just see the actual Google images of omphalocele. You will have a better idea about that. Okay, so our next condition is gastroschisis. Hmm. Uh, in omphalocele, we saw that the it was the per persistence of physiological hernia right now we know that there is a foregut midgut and a hindgut the through a midgut we have a yolk sac the artery supplying the yolk sac is known as the omphalomesentric artery it is also known as the vitelline artery okay now what happens is uh, if the vitelline artery or the suppose right omphalomesentric artery fails to develop or there is some problem in its you know normal development the corresponding abdominal wall that is supplied by the artery the corresponding abdominal wall and the yolk sac will be deprived of its blood supply so there will be a necrosis happening over the whole area supplied by that artery and your bowel loops your intestinal loops will be in direct contact with the amniotic fluid see we had seen in that diagram can see this again see uh, the fetus isn't the fetus floats in the amniotic cavity right so if the entire abdominal wall is defected don't you think that the bowels will be in direct contact with the amniotic cavity the amniotic fluid so this leads to maceration of your bowel loops okay and uh, okay so this is a brief idea about gastroschisis so uh, even in this case as there is no sac covering right as we had seen in omphalocele the defect was covered by the sac covering of the fetus in gastroschisis we do not have a sac covering so a main motto is to protect the bowel loops for that for a time being before the surgical management we actually put a saline soaked gauze over the bowel loops before the actual surgical correction is done okay so this was a brief idea about omphalocele and gastroschisis. Uh, let us come back to the differentiating features again. Okay, so it looks easier now. Uh, in omphalocele, yes, we have a sac present. Omphalocele is generally seen at around term, whereas gastroschisis is more common in prematures. Okay, and omphalocele, in omphalocele, the umbilical cord is attached to the sac, whereas for gastroschisis, the defect is usually towards the right side because the artery that is involved commonly is the right omphalomesentric artery. Okay, and the bowel character in gastroschisis is inflamed and edematous because obviously it is in direct contact with the amniotic fluid. Uh, omphalocele is commonly associated with some congenital anomalies uh, such as Down's adverse patau and bladder extrophy can also be seen in some cases. So, hence, omphalocele has a poor prognosis as compared to gastroschisis. And herniated viscera is uh, almost the same. Okay. So, this was about today's topic. Uh, if you like the video, you can share it with your friends. And if there are any topics which you find difficult to understand with respect to NEET, FMGE, NEXT, or your university exam, you can let me know the topic in the comment section and i will try to upload the video for the same as soon as possible so thank you